What's up everyone, it's Leo again, back with another video, and today we're gonna talk about how to buy your first rental property. I'll be showing you the step-by-step -step process, so make sure you stay to the end of the entire video. And also, leave some comments in the description if you have any questions about any step, because I've been through this many, many times and I'm here to help you buy your rental property. For any investor, buying their first rental property is a significant step. It's one of the biggest investments you can make. And if you put some time and effort into it, it could be a great way to make passive income. However, have you ever purchased a rental property? Well, maybe not. That's why you click this video. With these tips and tricks, you will be equipped with the knowledge necessary to ensure that the process of your buying your first rental property will go as smoothly as possible. So without further ado, let's get started. Number one, you want to find out if you're prepared to become a landlord. Although many people think of rentals as a way to make passive income, there are still some responsibilities that you must complete all year long. Not only C rating rental applications, leasing agreements, collecting rents, and managing tenants, you also need to deal with unforeseen maintenance issues if you want to become a landlord. Before purchasing an investment property, you need to determine if you are prepared to become a landlord. If not, I advise you may want to consider hiring a property manager. Number two, prepare a large down payment. There are several ways to finance your first rental property, all of which might demand a higher down payment and overall cost than those of owner-occupied homes. Most mortgage loans require a down payment between 3% and 20%, but some real estate loans demand a minimum of 25% of the asking price because investing in real estate carries a higher risk. Although not all lenders require a 25% down payment, especially if you can afford a mortgage. Having a savings account can help you cover any down payment or property financing expenses. Number three, find your perfect rental property. Properties that are considered good investments are those that are close to areas that offer in-demand amenities like grocery stores, malls, parks, and also close to schools. That'll be very convenient if the tenants have kids. So how do you find these investment properties? You could work with a real estate agent, find a local wholesaler, or purchase a foreclosed home at a courthouse auction, but those homes might need more work before they are ready for renters, or other options which you can use PropStream, for example, it's a good software that I have, and the most powerful real estate investment tool available to find the perfect property for you. You can also try PropStream for, se for seven days and see how it is. Check it out yourself, link will be in my description. And number four, create a rental business plan. Making a rental business plan can be a good way to outline your strategic plan, determine your goals, and establish your business's objective. Even though it is not necessary developing a plan before starting your rental business, it can help you enter the market well equipped to deal without any hiccups. Number five, calculate your operating cost and rent price. To calculate the profitability of your property, you must identify both your rent price and any anticipated operating cost. Some landlords look at nearby rental sites to find out how much other landlords are charging for comparable properties, but you can also spend money on an available rent analysis report to get an in-depth information on rental comps, rental demand in your chosen area, and more. Maintenance repairs, online property listings, apartment turnover, and tenant screening reports are a few examples of operating expenses. Each price varies according to your property's location, how frequently you turn over apartments, and how thoroughly you want to vet potential tenants. Number six, get landlord insurance. Landlord insurance is a wise investment because you never know what might occur when you rent out your home to tenants. The majority of insurance companies provide landlords with various levels of protection under their policies and to ensure that their own possessions are covered during the term of the lease. Tenants should nevertheless be required to purchase their own renter's insurance in case a dog, they get an illegal dog in their house, for example, that comes in and bites somebody. By the way, that happened to me. Number seven, know the landlord tenant laws. In order to avoid legal issues that could harm your rental business, landlords must abide by their local landlord tenant laws as well as fair housing regulations. These laws may also have an impact on the way your managed tenants screening, rental security deposits, and evictions. 
You can prevent any lawsuit or violation of any renter's rights by routinely reviewing your local laws and any changes that directly affect the rental industry. Number eight, find an online property management platform. Managing tenants and becoming a landlord can be a huge responsibility, especially without the help of a property manager. Fortunately, you do have the choice to use a property management software platform to help simplify the rental process for every investment and property that you own. With Departments.com, you can list your rental property, access lawyer review lease agreements, and take online payments for rent. That's how convenient the useful platform is, and it's free. If you're interested in using Departments.com, check out my link down in the description as well. Establishing a plan, becoming familiar with local laws, and putting in place procedures that can speed up the rental process are all essential components of owning and managing a rental property. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about the step-by-step -step process of buying your first rental property, just comment down below in the description again. Nonetheless, hope you enjoyed it. Please hit that like button for me. If you didn't like it, go ahead and hit that like button for me anyways. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.